Hey, it's Lisa from Inspired Wellness Tucson. So today I wanted to give you all a demonstration of the brain tuning forks. So quick thing to explain, the first four out of the five frequencies are um, need to be done as binaural beats of like two different tones so that your brain hears the difference between them. And the reason for that is that the first four frequencies are below what our ear can hear normally. So we're gonna use a fundamental tone for each of these. This is like a home base kind of tone. And then each subsequent one we do is going to be a certain number of cycles per second higher than the fundamental. So when we hold them up like this, our brain actually calculates the difference between them. And that's the wave that we're gonna feel going over our heads. So, um, and I'm using a hockey puck activator. So yeah, as you can tell, it's almost the same tone, but slightly different. And you're gonna hear as we go up progressively, you'll hear a little more difference between each of the tones as they get higher. So when you're first starting out, it's recommended that you say to yourself the name of the brainwave as you're listening. So I would say, this is Delta. Or, this is what Delta feels like. Just to orient yourself. Because the more you get used to identifying which tone you're listening to, the more that it's easy to identify what brainwave state you're in just during your day if you notice feeling a certain way. So um, typically they recommend doing about two to three soundings and then switching. So it ends up being about four to six activations of each fork before we switch to the next one. So um, I'm gonna put delta down, switch the fundamental back to my left hand, and now we're gonna go with theta. So you may be able to hear this one is slightly higher than the last one. It is slightly faster, so I can feel there's like a subtle vibrato that you can hear and feel, and it's faster with theta than it was with delta, but it's still very relaxing and peaceful. So theta typically is associated with meditative states, daydreaming, prayer. It's got sort of an otherworldly quality to it, even hypnosis. Uh, when we're little kids, we spend a lot of time in theta. Theta is a very creative realm. Um, kind of reminds me of like lucid dreaming state where it's like eerie and weird but cool and kind of familiar. And actually people with ADD often drift into both alpha and theta waves easily throughout the day. So that may be why this one feels so natural to me. <laughs> Um, now the next one is going to be alpha. You can hear the difference. This one's getting higher. So this is the first one where I start to notice that the vibration is feeling significantly faster. But it's still relaxing. So alpha is often associated with how we feel when we're listening to music, where there's a certain activity level of the brain that's going to be higher than with uh, meditation or sleep, but um, it's not quite a fully awake alert state. It's more like chilled out, receptive, open, and in kind of a flow state. So um, we will go next to the last binaural beat. This one is beta. And I'm sure you've heard of beta and like beta blockers. So I was really startled the first time I did this one and said to myself, this is beta. Before I even said this is beta, I caught myself going, ooh, I kind of recoiled. And that was like, oh, that's why they make beta blockers. So um, with lower beta states, that's a very alert, productive state. Often um, the headspace we're in when we're working, multitasking, running errands, driving, um, but higher beta states are associated with anxiety, tension, worry, inner pressure. Um, so we don't want to stay in beta too long. And, um, and high beta can really mess with people in terms of like performance anxiety. And that's why musicians and other performers sometimes take beta blockers to prevent the brain from going into that state because that could be extremely distracting if you're trying to perform and your little monkey mind is going, you're gonna mess up. Um, 
But yeah, I was amazed at just how much I disliked beta when I first did this exercise. Um, and that just kind of reinforced my belief that you should take breaks when you're working um, because after being really on for a few hours, you can start to fatigue, you can start to feel tension and just like you need a reset. Now this is my favorite one of all. This is the gamma fork. Um, this one is a frequency that corresponds with the highest consciousness that we can experience. So it's like a really wonderful transcendent meditation um, and very like opening. So with this one, that bell-like tone that you heard is an overtone. Um, the real frequency itself of the 40 hertz is like a low, it's really like a low rumble, um, but it has several different overtones that I can hear, which are the higher sounds that you're going to be picking up on. And with this one, um, the weighted balls at the end do make it so that it vibrates more, so you're going to feel a more palpable vibration. And with this one, I'm going to feel that vibration more next to my ear um, because it's really vibrating that space. It's not doing as much up in the center because I don't have two of them. Um, but also, I like to sweep this over my head and just kind of clear out the crown chakra, clear out the third eye chakra. So as you may know, third eye is associated with intuition, insight, wisdom, the inner guidance, our inner knowing versus thinking a whole lot. And then up here, the crown chakra is connection to spirit, connection to the divine. And really, I find that working with kind of sweeping, clearing motions is great to just clear out any subconscious blocks that you may not be aware of, but that you might feel that there's congestion or a sense of something in the way. It's great to clear that out with gamma. And I also love using this one if I really want to be extra on, like maybe I'm getting ready to work on a song I'm writing or another creative project or getting ready for an important meeting, or even if you need to have like a difficult conversation with someone the more you can get yourself resonating with the higher consciousness frequency, the more naturally and easily you'll find the right words and struggle less to express a truth in the best possible way, where it's like for the highest good of all, instead of a win-lose, it's kind of that win-win paradigm. So I tend to spend the most time in these brainwave meditations using gamma fork just because I love it so much and I figure you can't go wrong with raising your consciousness. I would definitely not spend nearly as much time with beta. But that's it. That's your intro to the brain tuning forks. Um, there's a wonderful local Tucson lady I know who has a website where people who live anywhere can order from her. She has an incredible um, selection of not just tuning forks but all sorts of sound healing tunes like Tibetan bowls and crystal bowls. Um, so if you're interested in her info, let me know and I can connect you with her so you can get your own forks.